like uh, grade one or grade two Braille and a bunch of other sort of individually settable parameters. And then that it once you log into the system, it knows all of those sort of baseline parameters. And all you need to do is tell it the, the location of the map you want. Mm -hmm. And it can you can then download a file that can be printed out on any Braille uh, graphics capable Braille embosser that is a well formatted Braille street map with with um, with a key you know with abbreviated labels and a key mm -hmm. and all of that and it's totally automated so it's cool. um, it's the kind of system that really um, came from putting you know the three you know the internet Braille embossing and GIS stuff together mm -hmm. um, to create something totally new that blind people had never had access to before, which is, you know, cheap and readily available tactile street maps. Um, so cool. that's uh, this this sort of, I, I grew the embosser farm <laughs> during that project because I wanted to make sure that it worked on as many different embossers as possible. So sure. these are some embossers, but it works on others that I don't have that I wasn't able to test here, but I tested elsewhere. Mm -hmm. so. so I don't know that much about the deltas between these types of embossers. Um, it's not significant so much. I mean, it's there's there's price and different features and yeah. um, you know different widths uh, that it's capable of doing. So you know there, and also they're just um, the tiger is sort of a the the highest end. Well, this one's an old one, so it's not high end um, anymore. But it, it does. It's capable of doing very high resolution braille graphics, tactile okay. graphics, which these others are not. So. The um, the this one can do like twenty DPI, mm -hmm. um, and these others can do um, like this one can do. Um, I think uh, I think it can do like twelve DPI at the most, um, and the same with uh, where's my the Everest. Oh, there it is. Yeah. So I've got these 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 can do. Um, let's see. I've got to do a metric. Conversion. These this this one can do like 17 DPI. But the thing is that um, the cool thing that the tiger can do that the others can't is that it, not only does it have high resolution, but it also um, has different dot impacts that are that you can do on an individual on a dot by dot basis. So it's um, so you can do pretty nice texturing and like line, depth, yeah, line height. Okay, stuff. interesting. Um, so that's you know that's just uh, huh. just a bunch of you know just different mm -hmm. models. I mean they're, they're not even you know it's it. I'm sure the manufact the individual manufacturers would tell you how vastly different and superior each of their embossers is. Um, but the fact is that all of them are out there in the market. Right. And, um, and if you want to create, and they all have different protocols for graphics. What's the rate of development and change in this market that you see? Very slow. Yeah, I would very imagine slow so. because um, braille embossers. I mean, these these braille embossers use technology that was by and large, um, you know, uh, new in the you know in the in the you know '60s maybe. Yeah. Um, and uh, the tiger uses a, a different. Technology that is that they invented, so that's more more modern. But they're the only ones using it, um, and um, you know this is really still the best way for the home the for the the um, you know the individual to produce tactile graphics. Yeah. Um, for uh, and and I mean that's you know we'll we'll return to the issue of tactile graphics I'm sure absolutely yeah during the day but basically um, you know thermoform is cool but it needs you know n no individual or very few individuals have the ability to do thermoform and if you're going to do thermoform you need to be able to produce an original right. so what's you know thermoform is just for making copies mm -hmm. braille tactile graphics um, if you want to make something. That you can feel and add labels to, and um, that has sort of the kind of crispness and precision that is really important for tactile graphics. Um, Braille embossers are definitely your first choice. With um, swell paper being, a, I think, a, for 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 my um, for my money, a, a a sort of second choice. Yeah. A deep second choice. Are people mixing? Uh 
I was thinking of the auditory feedback stuff there, some of the touch displays like you get on the iPad with auditory feedback that help people navigate a, an image, like a vector image. Well, now you're talking about... Um, uh, so, yeah, of course. Um, audio tactile graphics has been a mature technology mm -hmm. and evolving technology since the mid-80s. Mm -hmm. So basically, um, if you have a tactile image and you want to be able to add audio to it, there are um, three... Oh, I'm, I mean more like, well, you could add audio to it, but you also use pitch to be able to say, you know, to follow the vectors along. You know, that's a really interesting um, possibility, and actually I've, I'm doing some NIH-funded research right now um, around what I call um, audio haptic, um, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, uh, auditory mm -hmm. haptic displays. Yeah. Um, so there is no research on that right now. Yeah. And there are lots of... The number of auditory display types that are out there in the... Either, either as as one-off inventions or as um, uh, integrated with actual products, the number is pretty large. The number of auditory displays that have been evaluated for actual effectiveness <laughs> is is very small. Right. Um, so I'm actually doing research, you know, that that uses um, uh, rigorous psychophysics techniques to evaluate the effectiveness of auditory haptic displays. Right. Right now, um, the, the next step is to do the kind of um, line tracing, uh, auditory feedback yeah. for line tracing that you're talking about. Yeah. But I can tell you that, um, that it's very hard. <laughs> Not just, I mean, even if you had hard optimal... For the, for the user? For the user. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it requires a lot of cognitive overhead. Yeah. And it doesn't provide anything like the, um, the global picture that you can... Um, that you can rapidly integrate from a tactile image. Right. So eliminating the tactile component of an auditory tactile task and making it only sort of space-based and auditory, in other words, the kind of feedback you would get from an, you know, a flat iPad or a, yeah. a touchscreen, it is tough. And it's, it's, not, um, it's not going to be a... Um, it's not going to be a... a a way to communicate complex spatial relationships. It might be a good way to communicate um, single trace graphs, right? For example, shapes or and possibly things. a bar graph or yeah. um, something like that. But but, then, but not for certainly not for maps. <laughs> um, certainly not for flow charts. Yeah. Um, anything with with a little bit of complexity to it would would be very difficult to communicate that yeah. way. Yeah. Interesting. Even yeah, even if you optimize the auditory the, the low cost of the hardware. Yeah. Yeah, and no, there probably are different applications beyond just like a visual image, but just the depth to which people have mined the use of haptic feedback with auditory is I think hasn't even had yeah. the surface scratched of it, you know, with with these commercial devices where, you know, it just vibrates in your hand basically. I'm like it could do a number of different things. It responds, right? It has its compass setting. You could um yeah, I mean there's it's really um There, there are a bunch of reasons, you know, sort of um, sensory and um, and technical, why, uh, you know, why those types of feedback are so difficult to actually use in communicating shape or line direction or anything like that. Mm -hmm. um, not to say that it can't be done, but I think that the promise really lies in. Um, uh, Sort of uh, computer-controlled membrane um, and and full-page mm -hmm. tactile mm -hmm. technologies, which mm -hmm. are um, still completely you know pie in the sky, <laughs> but I think are much more likely to give us what we're really after than um, than by pushing the limits of auditory you know pure auditory feedback. Yeah. yeah. So. Yep. Um, yeah. It's just, I mean, by wiring 